Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel. In this video, we're going to do another example of using electromyography data to figure out where a nerve injury is. And this time we're going to be dealing with nerves in the lower extremity. And as we go throughout the question figuring out where the injury is, we're going to use this flow chart down here at the bottom to kind of guide our thinking. And the first question that we should ask ourselves is, do we think there's nerve root involvement? And remember, if there's nerve root involvement, that means that we have a radiculopathy where the injury is at the nerve root level, whether it's chemical irritation, physical damage, mechanical compression, it'd be a radiculopathy if there's nerve root involvement. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at all the involved muscles, which nice thing here is that they're all actually bolded in red, and we want to see if there is a common nerve root that's affected in all of these. Okay, And so looking up here, the first muscle where there's an issue is the anterior tibialis or tibialis anterior. We can see that that's innervated by the deep fibular nerve, and the nerve root levels that correspond to that are L4 and L5. The second muscle that's adversely affected is fibularis longus. We can see it's innervated by the superficial fibular nerve which has nerve root levels L5 and S1. And we can play this game going all down this chart. On the left side here, it looks like there's a total of five muscles that are adversely affected. And if we look at the root values of these nerves that correspond to each of those five muscles, what you'll actually see is that L5 is common to all of them. So if we look at this first one, that has L5. The second one has L5. Tibialis posterior has L5. If we go down to tensor fascia lata, that has L5. If we go down to uh, the lumbar paraspinal muscles, the lower ones that is, also has L5. And so this piece right here is satisfied. Our common nerve root level is L5, and all of the affected muscles have some L5 contribution. Now just as important as that, we'd also wanna make sure that the muscles that are not affected don't have L5. So if we look at the gastrocnemius, that's unaffected. Uh, that's innervated by the tibial nerve, and does that have L5? No, the highest level there is S1. Vastus medialis, one of our quadricep muscles, is normal. That's innervated by the femoral nerve. Does that have L5? No, just L2 through L4. And then the mid-level lumbar paraspinal muscles, do those have L5? No, they just go L3 and L4. So that's important. All the muscles that are adversely affected have L5 in their nerve root values, and all the unaffected normal muscles do not have L5 in their nerve root levels. Okay, so that's really important. Now, given this data right here, you might be tempted to just go on and say that this is a radiculopathy of L5 and call it good, and you'd be right, it is a radiculopathy of L5, However, we really should be doing one more thing to further rule up and confirm that it is a radiculopathy. And that's that we want to also check the nerves that originate off of the roots directly. Okay? Most of these nerves right here do not originate off of uh, the roots directly. Okay? We've got all the lumbar plexus, the sacral plexus, we've got the blending, all that stuff, and then most of these are really just the terminal nerve branches. right? But there's a couple down here, the rami. Rami are really close to the nerve root levels. We did talk about this in a previous video, but let's review this. So looking at this, this is a cross section of one level of the spine. It doesn't matter if it's lumbar or whatnot, it's really all the same. So here's our vertebra right here, and in the center we have the spinal cord, and coming off of either side, we have right here, this would actually be where my mouse is, this would be the dorsal root, and that thickening right there is the dorsal root ganglion. Coming off the other side of the spinal cord here would be the anterior or ventral root. And notice that the dorsal and ventral roots fuse, come together, they converge, into the spinal nerve, which is right here, and then very quickly the spinal nerve diverges into what are called rami. And the one that goes more anteriorly, this one, is the ventral ramus. Ventral rami go on to form plexuses. And then going more posteriorly right here is the dorsal ramus. And the dorsal ramus is really going to innervate muscles in the deep uh, components of the back, like the erector spiny or multifidus. And that certainly includes these paraspinal muscles. 
And so the key here is if there was a radiculopathy, the dorsal ramus would definitely be affected. So let's suppose for a minute, this right here is the root level of L5. If there's a compression right here or even physical damage, this dorsal ramus comes right off of that. That radiculopathy is definitely going to affect the dorsal ramus. And so if there is an issue with the dorsal ramus, then that strongly rules up a radiculopathy. If there was no issue with the dorsal ramus, there may not be a radiculopathy, although sometimes it can be a little wonky. But in this case, look. Look at these rami that include the level of L5. These are adversely affected. And so because the dorsal rami are adversely affected, that even further and more strongly rules out the fact that we have a radiculopathy. And then coupled with the fact that all of the muscles that are affected have L5 in their values, and all the unaffected muscles do not have L5 in their values, we can pretty much at this point confirm that we have an L5 radiculopathy. And so that is our final answer here. So I hope that this video furthered your understanding about using EMG data to figure out where a nerve problem is. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel.